What's up guys, it's Sean from Window Tint Warriors and today in this vehicle specific video, we're gonna be doing a 2020 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. We're gonna be tinting all the side windows and the rear window, so let's get to it. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure the windows are all the way up. They do move up and down as you open and close the door. And we also gotta trick the latch to make sure the window's in the fully up position. Once we do that, let's go ahead with the outside prep. We'll put the dryer sheet on the back window. We'll follow up with the inside prep. We're not gonna pull any panels on this because it is a frameless door window. We can tuck it into the gasket below. There, dryer sheet. All right, now that we have the outside all prepped, dryer sheets on the back window starting to dry, let's clean the insides and get to tinting the front door. On these windows that roll up and down when you open and close the door, you always wanna do the door that's gonna be used the most often first so that it can start drying up so that when you open and close the door, you don't have issues with peeling after the customer leaves. You always wanna apply excess heat after tinting these doors to make sure there's no issues with the peeling, like I said. So let's go ahead and give this a standard cleaning. And we're gonna pay extra close attention to the dot matrix here. We're gonna go over this with a double zero steel wool to make sure the tint tacks properly to those. We're gonna stay away from the dots with the razor blade because we don't want the razor blade to dull out. It's gonna focus on cleaning the plain glass with the razor. We'll grab our double zero steel wool and we'll just rough up those ceramic dots on the dot matrix. Our wipe down. Make sure when you're doing a vehicle of this magnitude that you're always wiping down the door panel and the water residue just to avoid any issues. They tend to be more sensitive. Grab the white stick gasket tool and get in the front gasket along the lower gasket just to remove any of those steel wool fibers that could have gotten in there. And we'll go to the back window. Very simple prep, just like any other vehicle. A light mist. Just a quick pass with the razor to make sure you don't hear any or feel any contaminants adhered to the glass. All right, now we can go ahead and lay the bulk material out on the door. So with this, it's just like any other frameless car door window. There's nothing crazy special about it other than having to scrub the dot matrix. And like I said, we're putting SunTech Standard Pro 20%. Now what we're gonna do is, since this bottom edge is not straight, we have to cut the bottom edge first. So we're gonna overlap all the edges, mount it in place in the center. Now let me make a little disclaimer here before I go and do the, this, the rest of this door. The quarter glass window and the back window, I pre-cut on the plotter. You can use quarter inch white vinyl tape and create a border around the edges, but the last thing you wanna do is cut directly on the glass on these brand new vehicles because it will leave a score line. So to avoid that from happening, they're very standard windows. It's a very standard back window. It's actually one of the easier back windows. And the quarter glass window is the same thing. It's just a dot matrix border. Cut it as close as you can, and that's all you have to do for those. But I'm gonna have those pre-cut to avoid having to cut on the windows. But if you were to be hand cutting, you could use this portion of the front doors for the rear quarter glass windows. So let's go ahead and mount this in place, cut the bottom edge, I'm going to cut the front edge, we'll cut that excess material off. And 
And shifting wise, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna shift it forward. Not gonna cut the back yet first. First, you wanna line up the bottom edge, release that squeegee mount, and shift it forward about an eighth of an inch, very slightly. Keep that bottom edge lined up. Mount it in place on the rear only. Then we're gonna cut this back edge. And after you cut the back edge, you're gonna release this. And then I'm gonna shift it forward again to create a very fine hairline gap on the back edge, as well as a very slight hairline gap across the bottom edge. That way when we install it, since we have this curve across the top, the film's gonna come down and back slightly. So you wanna make up for that on the bottom and the back edge. So a slight gap on the back. Very important to be very precise with this. If this gap on the back is not even, then you'll have an issue when you go forward with installation. So let's go ahead and mount it down the back side, across the top. And what we're doing here is we're bringing these fingers down to the bottom so that we can shrink them. And you can see them form across the bottom edge. Now before we shrink those, we're gonna cut the top edge. And then we'll go ahead and shrink these fingers. We can shrink them exactly like so because we left a very slight gap on the bottom edge for the air and water to come out of those and for them to sit into place after we shrink them. So go ahead with the standard wet shrinking method. Trying to keep them in the center by working outwards in from each side. Not allowing the heat to sit in one place for too long. You don't want to burn these. Now that the bottom of the window is completely shrunk, we have the sides cut. The only thing we have to do is trim up the edges and we can go ahead with installation. So what we're gonna do is, with this front top corner, you wanna try to keep that outward curve because that covers a light gap that would occur. If we were to cut this straight, we would have a light gap on the corner there. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna wrap it around, cut some of it off, but leave that shape there, and just clean up that front edge. check that before we install it we'll line it up on the outside but let's clean up this top back corner I want to match that radius as best as possible that's good and then the bottom corners nice and tight cool. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray the window up Spray the tint up, and I'm just gonna line this up across the top edge, just to make sure we have a nice tight fit across the top. So we're basically mimicking installing the film, but checking it from the outside before we actually install it. So we look good, there's a very slight hairline gap around the entire perimeter, and the bottom is overhanging. So now we're gonna overhang this film one inch from the top, overhanging the back edge, overhanging the bottom, mount it in place, squeegeeing off the contaminated water across the top, wipe the top edge of the glass, and then we'll go do our spray squeegee spray on the inside. When we do the spray squeegee spray on the inside, you're gonna wanna take an easy reach or a similar tool and get water between the gasket and the glass here 
just so that there's not a dry spot and the film doesn't cut, get caught up when we go to install it. So again, keeping the water very minimal, a light mist. Go across the top with the squeegee, overlapping strokes. All the way to the bottom. And then we'll do our mist of water, grab the film and go ahead and install it. Mist it up. And it's gonna be very similar to, if you guys haven't done a frameless door window before, it's very similar to bottom loading without the frame. So we're gonna put the bottom right corner in first, slide that into place, lay down the bottom edge. It may overhang over the rear a bit, but the main key is to get it on the window and then we're gonna take an easy reach and open that front seal up to get the film between the gasket and the glass. And then the bottom corner is another important part. You wanna make sure that's laying down flat. If there's any complications with that front edge, whether it be the front straight edge or the front bottom corner, if you don't get those down properly and you go to squeegee it out and there's a little crumple of film in there, this window's gonna end up peeling down the road. So you wanna pay close attention to the front and then work your way around to the rest. Now as it stands, this is a very consistent gap around the edges, so we're ready to mount this into place. A light mist of soapy water. And on this vehicle, I'm going to use a Bluemax with a handle just to get out as much water as possible because this customer is leaving once we are done with this. So we want to make sure this is as dry as possible before he leaves. put pressure on the window and push down. Putting pressure on the window relieves the gasket pressure across the bottom, allowing the water to escape as I squeegee down. Push into the front, and then we'll give this a final hard press and go around the edges with the heat gun and the Gray Lake Co-Card. So start from the front, overlap the top, wipe in the blade after each stroke, and we're ready to push out the top edge. And then the bottom edge, shrink any remaining fingers, push them out with the Gray Lake Co-Card. You can see on this front bottom corner, there's a little water residue there. That is very important to push out and to heat from the outside. We're gonna use the gold easy reach, starting from the top, working down all the way down. That'll lay that down very nice. And now we can come from the outside and heat it up to make sure it tacks up in that area. We'll give the outside a final squeegee to remove any water residue that we can see. Anything else that needs to be pushed out. You can see right here, we have an air bubble and a finger as well. So now you can see the dot matrix is a little bit inconsistent. And what we can do to kind of alleviate that is heat it from the outside and use our three and a half inch yellow turbo to push out the air between the channels of the dot matrix dots. And try to make it as consistent as possible. It is never gonna be perfect, but the best you can do is heat it from the outside and work on it with the yellow turbo squeegee. It's good for now. We'll let it sit and come back to it when we're done with the rest of the windows. I'm just going to give the bottom a once over again. Very light mist of water to lubricate the squeegee. Heat it up. And push. 
All right, now a little advice for these windows. If you have an infrared heat lamp, use it. If not, sit outside with the heat gun for about five minutes, literally five minutes, heating the lower edge of the bottom of the, uh, the roll down window, just to make sure that any fingers that could potentially pop up after the customer leaves are down and stuck. Because if they aren't and the customer opens them with the fingers up, it'll end up peeling and you'll have to completely redo the window, let alone the fact that the customer has to come back after they've already paid and had the job done. All right, so let's move on to the quarter glass window. I do have the quarter glass already cut out, so I'm gonna line it up for you guys and show you how precise it is. And then I'm gonna show you how I peel the release liner and install it on this tight area here. So you can see exactly how close you have to cut these windows to the dot matrix. They do tend to be a little bit tight on the inside. If you can look up close, I'll put my light on the inside. You can see how exact that is to the edge. Just point simple, cut it nice and close to avoid any issues of it, the material bunching up on the inside. So I'll go ahead and move the seat forward to somewhat be able to fit on the inside. It is a very small car, and this back window is gonna be extremely fun. Sarcasm intended. So to prep this window, we'll do our spray squeegee spray. I'm gonna move this film downwards so you guys can see that. Three and a half inch yellow turbo. Across the top, wipe the blade, overlapping strokes, wipe the blade. And the last one, wipe the blade, then down the side. We'll give that a light mist. We'll grab the release liner, spray the glue side of the film. Then I'll grab this with my palm, let it overhang with my fingertips. I'm gonna use my fingertips to apply the film into that corner. making sure not to touch any of the surrounding trim to avoid any contamination. And once you have it in place, wipe the water residue off the outside and heat it up a little bit from the outside just to get it to tack into place before you do that initial squeegee. That way it doesn't move around when you're squeegeeing it into place. And we can go ahead and mount it and squeegee all the water out. As you can see, when I did that first squeegee mark, I held it into place just so it didn't shift on me. And once you have that first squeegee mark into place, it really shouldn't move around much at all. Very simple, straightforward window to do. We'll apply some heat from the outside, make sure nothing pops up. Some heat from the inside, being very careful around the edges, especially if the material on the inside is felt. You do not want to burn that, and it does burn very easily. We'll wipe the inside panel off, and then we'll follow up with laying out the back window. Like I said before, this is already pre-cut, but it is very simple to hand cut yourself. Just make sure that on the bottom edge, you're paying extra close attention to cut as close as possible to the dot matrix edge. As you can see, there's carpet in there and it does get very tight down here. So you wanna make sure you're exact. All right, so we'll lay this pre-cut pattern down as close as possible. We'll do our H pattern. Very easy window to shrink, fairly small. And we'll follow up with shrinking. Of course, we're using the felt block 
eliminates the errors that could possibly happen with sand grit. Now with this back window, I am going to Frankenstein it. I would not recommend it unless you're very flexible and you're gonna be able to do the acrobats needed in order to get into the back window while holding the film like so. Otherwise, you can reverse roll it, but this is the way I'm gonna do it, is the Frankenstein method. So let's get inside, prep the back window, grab the material and slap it on the window. All right guys, a little tip here, these floor mats, if you're gonna be stepping on them, what I always do, no matter what kind of vehicle is, I'll flip them over just in case I step on them. I don't put a footprint in them. Let's get back in here. Just for reference, I'm about six foot two. So, if you can relate, you can relate. So we're gonna do our standard prep. That we missed the window. Blue non-score pad. Lightly scrub it up. This is a brand new vehicle, but you could never expect it to be clean. Wipe it down with the blue hot towel. Now one thing to pay very close attention to when you go forward with installation is to try to not hit this carpet. It may not release fragments, but it is very highly likely that it will. Now we'll go ahead and do our spray, squeegee spray, and then we'll grab the material from the outside. Use our five and a half inch yellow turbo. Wiping the squeegee blade after each stroke, overlapping with each stroke. Go down the side. And we'll hit the bottom edge with the side swiper. We'll mess that up. Let's go on the outside and grab that material. Before we release the liner, I'm gonna squeegee around the edges to make sure no contaminants fall into the film from around the perimeter. And then I'll release the liner. I'm gonna remove my watch for this. I miss it up really nice. This back window is extremely hot because obviously the engine is in the trunk and obviously he was going very fast to get to me. So it's putting off a lot of heat. I wanna make sure it's wet enough so I don't get tacky inside. Go ahead and grab the material and finagle our way into the back seat. There we go. And I'm not gonna put my foot over the uh, center console because I may end up hitting it with my shoe. I don't want to scuff it up. So I'm going to kind of Indian pretzel style with one leg until I get that bottom edge laid down into place, then I can reposition myself. So it's all about getting that bottom edge in, not hitting the carpet. Then we can lift the top up, finagle it back and forth so we can get behind the pillars. I'll reposition myself and then get the film into the final position. No light gaps. And we are ready to squeegee this out. Mist it up with soapy water. A little final tweak. Let me make sure this is perfect. So just like squeegeeing out any other back window, we're gonna start about four inches from the top, from the middle, pushing out to the sides, as low as we can go. And then we'll do the same for the other side, overlapping strokes, and then push out the top. And then we'll hit the bottom edge with the side swiper from the center out. 
And then we'll finish it off with the bulldozer from the center out as well. Give the window a nice wipe down. And I'm gonna push out the top edge with the yellow turbo wrapped in a blue hot towel just to get any water residue from out of there. Then we'll go back on the outside after I wipe these seats down. I don't want to let this sit on there. This is baby shampoo, but last thing we want is a little residue mark. Then we'll go on the outside, wipe the dryer sheet residue off the back window, and check it out and make sure everything's all good. Looks awesome. I am going to go ahead and apply some heat to the top edge just to avoid anything from popping up while I finish the rest of the vehicle. And I would apply heat on the outside edges for about five minutes, just like the door windows, just to avoid anything from popping up while the, the customer is driving it once he delivered it. All right, guys, now that is how you tint a 2020 Porsche 911 Carrera 4S. I'll see you guys in the next video.